Hey guys, Tessa Smith with mamasgeeky.com here. Uh, love this season, but I'd love to know uh, what it was like on set. Did you guys have to deal with a lot of the pandemic when filming? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, the, the escaping, pandemic was yeah. a thing. <laughs> it was definitely a thing when we were shooting, but you know, um, they put in protocols to make everyone feel really safe. And, you know, besides that, I had the, you know, luxury of knowing everyone before. So season two, we had that foundation. And so I feel like, you know, I kind of felt a little bad for, for folks like Rome who are new to the game and, and maybe didn't get to spend as much time with everyone outside of work, but we made the most True. of it while we were on set. And, and I think, you know, I'm just glad our show got made, <laughs> you know, yeah. because, because through adversity, you, you, you get a little scared, but at the end of the day, like Netflix was enthusiastic to make our show and we just had to wait a little bit before we could actually do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had to wait on me. That's what happened. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> they would have made, made this show without me. I'm just thankful that I was able to be, to be a part of it. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, a pandemic affected everybody, um, you know, but especially on, on set, because if any, any one of the actors get, get sick, like that's, that's the show, you know what I mean? And thankfully, like we didn't have that problem. Like everybody was really responsible and um, we wore our mask and did all the tedious things that, you know, we didn't want to do, but we had to do in the sake of the show because the people wanted the show and they need it. And, and so it needed to come out. And so I feel like Netflix did a great job with implementing certain things to make sure we were safe and got it done. All right, our next question goes to Megan Cooper <laughs> with Young Monkey. Hey there, so I live in Atlanta, so I always like to ask, uh, are there any of your favorite filming locations or somewhere you used to go while you were filming um, around the city? Yes and yes. So for me, mm -hmm. we didn't get to shoot there season two, but the Fox Theater. So season one, the Fox Theater was actually catty corner to the place that I was staying at. <laughs> <laughs> so when we shot at the Fox Theater, I was like, I'm going to walk to work, guys. And then they're like, no, you're not. And then when it actually came to us, I drove. I drove across the street and I parked in the park because it's right next to my trailer. I didn't feel like walking the three blocks that it took. But I loved the location because of the proximity. And also the Fox Theater is this incredibly beautiful building. And mm -hmm. everything is just rich with, with Atlanta history. Um, and I really, really loved uh, shooting there. Your second question, I mean, there's actually just an infinite amount of food places that I really loved but this season I lived in Virginia Highland and my favorite thing to do uh was in the mornings I would go and do a walk around the park that um was right outside the house that I was staying at and it's just such a calm nice like sweet little neighborhood with like lots of families and kids running around and people walking their dogs and so like it was a treat in the morning to be able to just do like a lap take 10 minutes to myself before I went to work. Um, there's so much to love about Atlanta. And, you know, if there's a season three, I would, I'm so ready to go back there and spend more time there. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I love Atlanta um, to be able to work. There is always a joy for me. It's like a home away from home kind of thing. Um, I, I mean, I ate at so many different places. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't really have like a super favorite place that I ate at, but the moment I got there, I, you know, found the nearest gym because I, I go hoop a lot and so um I implemented myself in a community like right away and I think it was funny because I would see these guys all the time when I play basketball and then all of a sudden I just disappeared <laughs> you know and I had one guy find me on it on Instagram he's like yo what happened to you I'm like well I was working there like none of these guys knew what I did you know what I mean they didn't know <laughs> I was acting or anything they just, they just knew me from playing basketball they're like wait that's that dude that, that I hooped with for like four months and I'm like, yeah, man, I didn't live there, actually. And they were like, what? Like, nobody knew. So and I, hopefully I get to go back. You know, I'll pop up again. Like, like what the hell? <laughs> what is this dude doing? Also, Rome, it's okay to talk. Make friends. Tell them about what you do. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I, I want to be one of the guys, man. Look, yeah. I'm here yeah, to Yeah, I just want to be it. one of the boys. No, you're yeah. really cool. You're an actor, and you're there for a small period of time shooting a TV show. I'm they like, should listen, all watch it. Work, you need to be I'm your like, own PR agent, man. You know, I'm working in advertising here. Like, oh, yeah, that's super boring. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Great, thank you. <laughs> Our next question goes to Robin Davis with Mom the Magnificent. Hi, guys. This is such a fun sci-fi series. I really enjoy it, and my 
um, 15 year old son who's super into comics. This is his favorite. So he's obsessed. Can't wait to watch all of season two. I'd love to know what drew you both to your roles and why did you want to be a part of this series? Well, for me, I came on, you know, obviously at the very beginning and I had never seen anything like it. When I first read for it, I actually didn't know that there was like a teaser trailer or that there was a comic book. I just thought it was its own kind of thing. And I had never seen anything like it with the set of people with like black people and it's in Atlanta and it's, you know, rooted in this, in this way where it's like a little kid, you know, it's not like they're teen. It's not anything like that. It's like, he's a small, he's an elementary school. And so I had never seen anything like it. And then when they asked me to be a part of it, I, I just felt so privileged to be able to pioneer a show like this. Um, and so now, you know, I get to see the fruits of my labor. People are very responsive. They're very happy about the show. They're excited for season two to come out. And it just makes me feel really proud to be a part of this show. And I also really respect and appreciate Netflix for being able to to help make the show a reality so that people can enjoy it. Yeah, right. um, for me, um, it's, it's just been a, it's been a joy. I mean, we drew me to the role of many, many things, um, but mainly that what this show represents, um, it, there's, there's also the sci-fi aspect, but there's a, the real family aspect and uh, having to be able to work opposite of Alicia and, you know, Josiah and, and it's, there's so many things I'm like, yeah, I would love to. You know what I mean? I'm like super happy I'm going to do it. Our next question goes to Renisha Springer with Queen Thrifty. Hello. I had the opportunity to, to screen season two, and I'm super excited because we've been waiting a little bit of time in between mm -hmm. from season one. So if you both could say something to those fans that have patiently been waiting and um, for season two to come up, what would it be? And Rome, good to see you off of a... Uh, into something different because <laughs> I remember yeah. you. For, yeah it's good to see you on a different show so thank you appreciate that um I would tell fans first of all thank you thank you for waiting thank you for bugging us on social media thank you for bugging Netflix on social <laughs> media Netflix. thank you for watching the show you know, Netflix is driven by these eyes. Like they need people to come and watch these shows. And so if you're out here pioneering for us on social media, telling your friends, I was getting my hair and makeup done today and we were talking about how everyone, when season one came out, everyone was talking about it. And that's how people mm -hmm. found the show. It's not from like something, a billboard or whatever. It was like that grassroots kind of word of mouth stuff. And it's the fans that made that possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the fans that pioneer the viewers that pioneer season two. So I know it's been hard, but if you can wrap your head around the fact that there is a pandemic and if you can wrap your head <laughs> around the fact that things take time, a sci-fi show takes a long time to make with visual effects. Like, thank you for sticking along and thank you for yeah. not forgetting about it. And the show will be worth your while. I absolutely promise that. Yeah, I want to say to the fans, listen, I'm one of you. OK, I was a fan, too. All right. And I didn't know when the season was going to happen. Um, well, before I knew I was going to be a part of it, I saw the show and I'm like, they're just going they're not going to give us another season. You know, so I'm in the blogs, too. I'm talking about it. I want a new season, too. So I appreciate y'all staying on top of it. And, you know, all the probably the messages to Netflix and, you know, the comments, they see all of that. You know, like she said, it's really driven by what people want. I mean, there's so much out there for people to watch. And so. Um, it's super important that fans are galvanized behind the show. So it pushes and nudges Netflix to like, yo, get it done because we want it right now. And they're like, okay, okay, fine. We'll figure it out. And so they did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm with y'all. We, we need the season two now and we need season three and we need four, however many we need. You know, we, we don't <laughs> <be done. laughs> I agree. So I'm rooting for season three. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Renisha. Next question goes to Cami Allen with The Mommy Diaries. Hi guys, I'm Kami um, from themamadiaries.com. Nice to see you both. Hi, Alicia, Kayla. I can relate to your role so much. Um, mm -hmm. her, Nicole is such a mama bear doing anything she possibly can for Dion. You know, I watched the show with my, I have two sons, they're 12 and eight. And oh my goodness, I was, I could feel those emotions, you know, and oh my gosh, it was, it was really, mm -hmm. really great. You did a great job with that. Um, Rome, your character blew me away. 
you are such a strong character, but you have anxiety. And, Mm -hmm. you know, normally you see, if if anxiety is portrayed on a show, you see it's a woman who has anxiety. But for my eight-year-old has had some anxiety since the pandemic. And for him to see this strong character, you know, with an anxiety Mm -hmm. on TV, that's that's powerful. And so thank you for that. Um, I would like to know how you prepare yourself for those scenes. Um, For me? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that aspect of it was super important. I think that really defines Tevin's, you know, character, uh, him as a person. And like you said, I think it's about breaking those, uh, you know, the, the masculinity tropes, like those things that people think that, oh, you're a man, you're not supposed to even identify to what, you know, uh, having anxiety is. And so to be able to give Tevin, who is, like you said, a very strong character and feels very present, to have to deal with this on his own, uh, to show people that even even people like him, who who's powered, you know, wow. has to deal with this thing too. And to, and I think that I mean, you know, this show does a great job of just implementing these really small Easter eggs in the show to to remind you of how we're all kind of connected. Uh, and if you can watch Tevin and be like, I connect with that. I mean, connecting with a guy who has powers, you know, it's great writing, but also just the true essence of like humanity. We're all kind of going through similar things. Uh, so it's cool to be able to be a part of a show like that. Thank you both so much. I really, really enjoyed the series. This Thank season. you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was going to say, Rome, too, it's also like no one mm. wants to watch a perfect person go live yeah, white. it's not real. Yeah. I think the interesting aspects of a, of a human being are the flaws, are the, the roadblocks, the mental struggles that they go through. And if you have a show that can actually portray those things in a way, you make it incredibly relatable for other people. And like, I love that because Rome could, you could come in. I almost feel like, you know, like MBJ's character, like playing the dad because he's this past person. He is kind of this like trophied mounted, like, you know, they have an idea of like, he's kind of this like perfect dad. But, you know, if he if he was alive in the show, like you would find these flaws, but because he's kind of put on this pedestal, like it's nice to see a father figure for Dion have a bit of reality because Dion doesn't have a perfect life. He struggles. He has these issues with like peer pressure and all that stuff this season. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. what they did with your character and how you portrayed it and how it's manifested in your powers, I think it's I think it's really cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Next question goes to Candy Olivares with Candy Palooza. Hi, it's wonderful to speak with you both today. Um, So love the series. Season two blew me away. When you both read the script for season two, um, obviously it's very, I feel like it's even more physical for both your character as well, Alicia. Uh, Was there something that you, was there, I guess an episode that you were most um, excited to film? Um, Yes. (laughs) <laughs> it's at the end of the season and involves almost everyone um and there's just like everyone is I don't know, like how do I say this um everyone is bringing the best version of themselves and everything that they've learned up until this point and they're all working together and I think to shoot it you know I think this season I was very separate from a lot of the other characters and so it's at the very end of the season that everyone gets to come together and those are my favorite things. Like, sure, mm-hmm. it's nice to, the days go much faster when it's just you alone, <laughs> but like the <laughs> yeah. joy, the pleasure of acting, it happens when you when you have the, the interactions with the other characters and you can kind of see the story come together. Definitely. All right, our next question goes to Lynette Fernandez with Fantastic Life. Hi, Lynette Fernandez with Fantastic Life. Uh, thank you so much for the season. It was great. Uh, so my question's for both of you. I'd like to know if you can share a fun fact or two about the show or maybe even your character um, that the audience may not already know. Mm. Wow, that's tough. Um, Asking tough questions here. Yes, that's a whole, I mean, I'm trying to put myself back there. Let me think. Uh, uh, well, the, the, the viewers don't know anything yet, so I could probably say anything. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <That's valid. laughs> um yeah I, well yeah i don't know that's hard that's, that's a good question i mean i would say it's yeah. like so nicole was a dancer first season right and mm-hmm. she like came or she was a dancer previously and then season one was about her finding her love of her like you know dance again 
And then this season, what they may not know is like dance becomes less of a priority for her and be, and it becomes mm. more about like, should I learn some basic physical protection skills to, to defend my son to the best ability possible? And so what you may not know uh, about season two is that Nicole, <laughs> Nicole throws a mean right hook. She's throwing elbows and oh, it's definitely like a learned skill that she's acquired from the time in between season one and season two. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. All right. Our next question goes to Melissa Pizza with the Mommyhood Chronicles. Hello, I'm Mel from the Mommyhood Chronicles. Really enjoyed the second season. My question for you is there, is there someone or something that you got inspiration for your characters from? Um, uh, yes, my mother. <laughs> she's a, yeah. she's a single mom. She, she, she did her very best throughout my entire life to, to have me not see any kind of struggle. And I think that's absolutely what I've implemented into how I portray Nicole for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I could also say my mother, but I think for me, I think, uh, I, I really didn't draw from any real inspiration. I, I, I wanted to draw from the lack thereof experience in my life. I feel like probably having a male figure, um, when I was younger to have someone like Tevin, I didn't. So I just thought about what that would be like and what that relationship would look like, you know, if I was a kid. And I think that kind of helped me shape, um, you know, Tevin's approach into how he wanted to talk to Dion about just everyday life stuff. Thank you. 